<laughs> Welcome to the open forum, second day of the the uh, lectureship here at Spring Church of Christ. We welcome all of you, and we welcome those who are seeing us on the internet, and uh, we uh, invite your kind attention, and uh, we will attempt to proceed. We will not only attempt to proceed, but we will proceed in decency and in order. Let me reiterate something that was stated yesterday for all concerned, everybody, not just you gentlemen, but everybody. We, as the eldership here at Spring, uh, Ken Cohn, Jack Stevens, and myself have delegated the authority to conduct this meeting to David Brown, who is also the director of the lectureship. Any questions? All right. Uh, then, then I'm going to assume that that uh, motion is made and, ex <laughs> and accepted, and uh, we will proceed on that basis. If we cannot proceed on that basis, we will just bring things to a screeching halt, and whoever does not comply to that will be asked to leave. Understood. Everywhere? Very good. All right, as we begin this, uh, this evening, or this afternoon, we're going to ask Brother Skip Francis to lead us in a word of prayer, and then I will turn the proceedings over today. <coughs> Let's pray together. Our God and Father in heaven, we come before your throne of grace this afternoon. We ask you to be with us and strengthen us. And we pray, Father, as we spend this time together and discuss various matters from your word, that you would help us to always reason together. Help us to do so in love. Help us to do so with the truth in mind. Help us, Father, always to desire to come to a conclusion that is based on a proper application of your word. We pray for your guidance and for your help. We pray especially for your presence. We pray, Father, as we continue through the rest of this lectureship, that all that we do may accomplish the purpose that your word is set out to accomplish. And we pray especially, Father, for repentance among those who are and remain in error. Guide us now and always in all that we do. In the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, amen. What we want to do is proceed on the basis of how we left off yesterday in view of Brother Lynn now being able to be here. And we just want to let him come on up and address what you brought out yesterday. Is that, that's fair, and I think that's the way we want to do it, at least to begin with. So, Lynn Parker, where are you? You come up here. I'm Lynn Parker from, uh, from uh, One Blinking Light, Kingsbury. Uh, okay, and New Braunfels Congregation and other places uh, um, that uh, may or may not want to claim me. Uh, whenever we talk about this, I want to make sure that we understand some of the things that we're uh, discussing. First of all, it's going to be necessary in this situation for us to, uh, to press a matter. Um, I heard someone mention that yesterday. It's a little bit hard for me to see exactly who was up here speaking, things like that, because I was looking at the Internet, and, um, and I, as you know, you were listening to me trying to talk back through a cell phone and on here. So we need to press some matters. At the same time, I told the elders last night, I thought I could do this in three minutes. Now, I'm going to start out by repenting and saying, I can't to do this in three minutes. Okay. But maybe five, maybe five I really can. And uh, yesterday was a demand for an apology by me for the post that I made on uh, January 21st. Well, what I'm going to say is that that post there, if I had it to do over again, I would rewrite it. I'm going to tell you, brethren, that right now. I would rewrite it. Instead of saying that you went up there to get ammo concerning uh, Dave Miller, I would add you went up there to get ammo concerning Dave Miller and Joseph Metter. And if you say, well, Frank didn't remember that, then I'm going to tell you that Frank made, I hate to say this with all the wives here present, Frank made a mistake. Frank, you're wrong. And what that proves is that we're going to take him out, we're going to flog him on the way we already got him. We got him right in the knee. Look, he's walking to the cane. Now, my point behind this is just, is just simply this. Sometimes a person can forget a detail. Sometimes a person can forget certain things that happened in a certain way. I deal in matters of evidence. I deal with people 
that uh, forget certain details that uh, come up. As a matter of fact, this is simply just a quibble. This is a quibble that's dealing with uh, matters that are not the most that are not the most basic and fundamental to this discussion. And the most basic and fundamental to this discussion is: Do you men support and fellowship Dave Miller and Joseph Metter at one time, just very recently, until this adultery matter came up? Were you men in fellowship with? Them? That's what this is about. This whole thing. And if you want to say, if you want to say, well, this started with Lynn Parker's January 21st posting on the internet, that's just not so. If, in fact, you hadn't been on the Shenandoah lectures and supporting people who are not in fellowship with God, if you hadn't been fellowshipping them, there would have been no post of January 21st. But I think this also, this whole thing about did we go for that purpose. Yesterday there was a question toward the end of the open forum, and that question was asked by Ken Cohn, one of two questions. And the first question was, was there a discussion about Dave Miller? Now, I know uh, when you went up there to, to see Joseph Metter. Now, I knew there was. I'm the one that called Ken Cohn on his cell phone, and just a few minutes before the open forum ended yesterday, I asked him to ask that question because I knew that if that was answered uh, honestly, and, you know, sometimes a person may be mistaken, and it doesn't mean they're being dishonest. Sometimes it can be because people are human and they forget. But in this case, I knew that if you were accurate about that information, you're going to say yes. Now, how did I know that? I wasn't privy to that. I wasn't in the, in the office there with uh, Joseph Metter. I knew it because of the fact that Frank and I often talk. Now, I want to mention something else right here. Uh, you know, Frank forgot to, to mention that yesterday. And Frank said, well, I never said that. In fact, Frank made a mistake. Now, with all that said... This man has been one of the best friends to the Beeville congregation, but more than that, to the Lord's cause. And on the day of judgment, I will be glad to say that I have been a friend of Frank and Grace Carragher, two of the most humble, uh, two of the most dedicated servants of God that I have ever known in my life. And they stood down there practically alone against this, against this tide, because they loved the church. It wasn't that they wanted to make a personal enemy of anybody there. They saw error, and they wanted to stand, and Frank oftentimes felt like he was absolutely alone, and I have sat many times in his, uh, in his room and stayed many days in his house, and there's not a single day or time when we don't discuss Bible matters. And here's a man that loves the truth, and here's a man that would have been the best friend that you brethren could have had in living for and preaching the truth, if instead of getting mad at him and rejecting the evidence, you had absolutely gone to it and listened to the evidence and said, I'll consider all of this. But not only that, the fruit of your own actions prove the truth of what we said there on that Internet posting, uh, what we wrote, the fact that you went to those Shenandoah lectures. The fruit of it proves it. By your fruits, you'll know them. By the fruits, you'll know them. Matthew 7:20. Now, in fact, you did go up there. You went in fellowship in the, with those brethren up there, including Joseph Metter. People tried to warn you about Joseph Metter, and I'm not saying this just to you, and I, and I want to I wanna emphasize this. If, if you brethren change your position, no one will be any quicker trying to get over here and shake your hand, pat your back, and extend the right hand of, of fellowship and say, let's go on and let's press this fight together. There is nothing that can't be repaired, and I'm calling on you brethren to repent. I'm calling on you to repent of uh, violating God's lines of fellowship as declared then in 2 John verse 9 through 11 and Ephesians 5 and verse 11. The Bible doesn't say go up there and fellowship these brethren and speak with them. It says have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather even reprove them. Now, on top of that, you were asked this question. Have you received a copy of the Miller CD? Now, yesterday there were some derogatory remarks, if I heard correctly, about that Miller CD. And I'll let... Uh, um, Michael. Michael wants to deal with that, and so I'm not going to try to get off into his business, and I know my time is running short. I think about this quibble just a little bit more. Uh, several years ago, as about, a matter of fact, just three years ago, we arrested, um, we arrested three young men for arson. They burnt down five houses, and one of them I was uh, talking with, and we were having a long conversation, and two of them were firefighters, and they had gone to the first house, and they had taken uh, a gas can from the fire department, belonged to, isn't that the irony? From the fire department and gone and, and set fire to that house using gasoline in the fire department's gas can to ignite the, the flame. 
And I was rehearsing this as one of them. I said, so you burnt house number one, and you, you used the gas can then to go over to house number two. And I said, now here's the rest of the details, and you use that fire department gas can to go to house number three, and then you burnt number four, and on such and such a date, you went to number five. And after all this was said and done, he was just uh, chomping at the bits. No, 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 no. On house number three, we did not use the fire department gas can. <laughs> now, brethren, I, that's exactly what this is about. You, brethren, went up there to talk to him. And I, I'm, I'm just wondering, then, what about, what about that discussion concerning Dave Miller? And you came back and you declared to Frank Carragher, then, that these men were worthy then of support. And there's something else, there's a contradiction here. You all need to get together and decide, did Dave Miller not teach anything that needed repentance, or did he repent? You can't do both. You can't have both. Well, anyway, I just say this, that you had, you had the opportunity to know better than what you all are doing. And brethren, that's one of the things that's hurting the church, and this is a microcosm exactly of what's going on right now in the Brotherhood. The information is there, it's credible information, and honest hearts will go and seek it out, even if it's not popular, even if it means getting cut off of lectureships, even if it means family and friends and old, long ties uh, then come to an end. And this is what we have to do. We have to do in all this. This didn't start with Lynn Parker posting something on January 21st. It didn't start with Frank and Grace Carragher leaving the Beeville congregation. This did not start then with any of those things. This started with some men not holding to the doctrine of Christ, and then brethren, just like you, doing just like you've done, then holding their hand and supporting them instead of withdrawing fellowship. Thank you, Brother Parker, for that uh, fine presentation. And uh, now that I've been given opportunity to respond, I first of all would like to say to everyone in this audience that we, the Rodriguez family, hold no animosity for any man or woman present today. I know there towards the end got a little heated, but uh, even still we ought to be permitted to become angry and sin not. Uh, even as the Bible teaches. Now I will uh, go ahead and respond to what Brother Parker said. First of all, he makes us aware of the fact that Frank Carragher indeed misspoke. Now, was he repenting for Frank Carragher? He said that Frank Carragher was wrong. But if Frank Carragher needs to come up here and say for himself whether he agrees with that, whether he indeed misspoke, and so therefore, was that an attempt at repentance or an attempt at uh, apologizing? It was an attempt, but what kind of attempt was it? Number two, Brother Lynn Parker tells us that he deals with matters of evidence, and uh, I'm wondering if in dealing with evidence, there is not a stress on verifying what we claim to be evidence. Or do we simply take people at their word without checking it out? That is neither reasonable or affirmed by the scriptures. First and foremost, if we go to the Old Testament, and I'm going to bring scripture into it because yesterday we did a lot of uh, arguing and we did not look at the scriptures, but if you want to follow along, <coughs> I want to begin, first of all, with Deuteronomy 17, then I want to go to Deuteronomy 19, and then make a few other quick points about how this applies in the New Testament. Brother Israel, let me yes. just say, we don't want a full sermon. We've got to get on with it so yes, sir. we know what's going on and what the problem is. Okay. One of the things I want to mention is you brought this up about Brother Carriger. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Carriger can say what he wants to, and I think he ought to in view of where this started off yesterday, and the fact that Lim wasn't here, we let him come up here. I think Brother Kerry ought to be able to state what he wants to state right now on that given point before you go any further. Do you have any problem with that? No, sir. May I sit up here? Yes, you may for a moment. Frank Carrier from Skidmore, Texas. I 
have forgiveness for stating yesterday that's, uh, that I did not believe that I presented that that away. I did not reread it. I had no problem with what was said in the post. And so I went from there. And if my statement offended anybody, I apologize. I ask forgiveness. The rest of my statement was verbatim. And let me say one thing else while I'm here. Israel, you made a statement yesterday that you had evidence. I didn't have any. Your brother didn't tell you that he said at my computer and read off the Brown Trail website Dave Miller's sermon and many other things that Dave Miller was involved in at Brown Trail. Thank you. While you're coming down, let me just say, I, I want to ask, is that statement from him acceptable to the Rodriguez family? Yes, we, I'm going to say that we appreciate Brother Carragher's courage, and I will, uh, in the same vein as Brother Parker, say to Brother Carragher that we counted him as a dear friend while there at Adam Street, and we still count him as a dear friend, but hopefully we can resolve these issues that are between us, and when they are resolved, I hope and it is our prayer that we can call each other brethren and friends. Well, that is all our desire. Yes. Uh, but we'll know that when we, we sift through all of this. Well, here's the thing. that it, it comes down to this. Dave Miller taught false doctrine and therefore is a false teacher, or he did not. Yes, and we're going to get to that, but we need to deal well, with the, the statements. We're, that we're one of the things we, well, that's fine. But there's one of the things we've got to remember is that there are a number of comments made and names called yesterday. Yes, sir. And those men spoke over here the whole time when we dealt with things yes. and never got hardly to speak. Yes. I want them, as soon as you finish, yes, to sir. be able to come up and respond to the things that you said. Yes, sir. And, and we're all for getting to the Dave Miller issue. We don't deny that that is the issue, and we will get to that, but as you have said in the past, first things must be dealt with first. And that's right. So going back to the point of Brother Parker dealing with evidence, I'm wondering if in dealing with evidence there is the, the reasonableness or even the, the principle in verifying what we call evidence. Or do we simply accept what a person says or even what we see without verification in those areas where there may be some ambiguity about what a person said or about maybe even what we saw? Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 2 through 7, you're going to notice that the law of God under the Old Covenant was that when something was heard, when it was noised abroad, by the people of God, and in verses 2 through 4, notice what was noised abroad. And if there be found in the midst of thee within any of thy gates, which Jehovah thy God giveth thee, a man or woman that doeth that which is evil in the sight of Jehovah thy God, in transgressing his covenant, and hath gone and served other gods, so forth and so on. I'm trying to make this as quick as possible. Verse 4 says, And it be told thee, and thou hast heard it, what should we do? Then shalt thou inquire diligently, and behold, if it be true, and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel, then shalt thou bring forth that man, so forth and so on. Verse 6 says, At the mouth of two witnesses and three witnesses shall, that, uh, shall he that is to die be put to death. Now I want to make a point here. Notice that even after something has been heard, even after an allegation has been made, we do not ever destroy the point in Scripture that that which is heard must be verified. We never destroy that point. Okay, let, we, let, let me mention this okay. point. We're in all agreement with that. Okay. We believe that as much as you do, all and right. I believe it. I imagine, well, I don't know how far back I believe it, as soon as I learned I was supposed to. Yes, sir. So I don't know that that needs to be pressed anymore. I think we, we okay. know. We also know that in the mouth of two or three witnesses that every word be established. Okay. If that, we understand that. Yes, sir. We understood that a long time ago, so I don't see any use of pressing that anymore. Okay. Let me just uh, fast forward then. That's also stated in Deuteronomy 19. It's also stated as a prophecy concerning the Christ himself in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 1. 
when Jesus was to come on the scene, and there he's mentioned as uh, the branch of Jesse, the root that would spring up, it says that he would not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor by the hearing of his ears, but would judge with righteousness. Now we jump into the New Testament, John 7:24 says, judge righteous judgment. We know what it is to judge righteously. It's to verify all the essential evidence and come to a conclusion only warranted by the evidence. Anytime evidence is ambiguous, anytime evidence is not clear, then you cannot accept that evidence. It has to be forthright. It has to be forthcoming. Brother Carragher tells us people can make mistakes. That's why you verify. Well, let me in order again, because you're going right back over the same stuff you just went over. I think we know that. We know it has to be verified, as I quoted a while ago. I don't know. This doesn't need to go on because we agree with you. Well, one of the rules of debate, and we're not in a formal debate, but one of the rules of debate is this. Once a thing has been admitted, you leave it alone. Okay. We agree to that. We stipulate that. Yes, sir. So I don't see the use of continue to press that. Well, I, I need to establish a point, and I would... But it's established. Okay. I would respectfully request that... You quit interjecting when you, you showed Brother Parker no interjections. You let him speak as much as he wanted, as what he said was what he said. And if there would be less interruption, I could finish and sit down and then have the brethren come well, up. Well, there's no use to pursue a thing when you've already said it. He was introducing that matter okay. to yesterday. Let me, let me do it. Now, well, this, this, this well, just, don't, just don't continue to go on that vein. Go to something else, okay. or let's deal with that, and then we'll go to something else. But this breaks the continuity of the point I'm attempting to establish. And, and when you interject and break the continuity of the point, you disrupt the mentality of well, the people that are here. Well, let's put it this way. We'll just disrupt it, break the continuity, but we understand it, we agree with it, we stipulate it, and that point's made. That's fine. You may understand it, you may agree with it, but what about the people who are viewing? I don't what think about any, the audience? I don't, I don't think there's any ignoramuses here. Well, you can speak for them here if you'd like, but what about the people on the Internet? Well, the people on the Internet, I don't know who all is there. There may be a Chinese on there that's trying to understand English for the first time. I can't help that. But the point is, we know we have to prove all things old fast that which is good. Okay. We know we have to establish what is credible evidence. Okay. We know that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word must be established. Okay, let me, we know all of that. Okay, let me jump to the point then. Okay, that's all we want. Okay. Brother Lynn Parker says that Brother Carragher gave him evidence. Number one, the evidence was not accurate. That's already been established. Number two, Brother, Brother Carragher was not an eyewitness to this meeting. Now I want everybody to let that sink in to their heads for just a moment. Brother Carragher was not an eyewitness. He was not literally there at the meeting we had with Brother Metter. So that being established, whatever Brother Carragher said cannot be introduced as evidence as such because he was not a direct witness to the meeting itself and what was said and what was not said. Now, he took some things that we had said and that he had said, and they were all confused. They were skewed because this issue does involve Dave Miller at the time and Joseph Metter, and, and a lot of things were said, a lot of things were spoken, but no one was recording, no one was taking things down, and so they all got jumbled up. The point of the matter is what Brother Carragher told Brother Lynn Parker, it's on record. He said that he never told that to Lynn Parker. Lynn Parker stated it on the website as fact, and that has been proven that it is not a fact, it then is a false statement, a false accusation, and Brother Lynn Parker still needs to repent of it. It is an inaccuracy. Um, it is an inaccuracy. Well, and, let, me ask, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. True or false? Very simple. True or false? Mm -hmm. Dave Miller is a false teacher. That, we haven't decided that yet. You haven't decided that no, yet? No, yes, we haven't decided that Okay, yet. now, were you all, your family here two years ago at this lecture? Yes, year? sir. Did you start hearing things even then that might possibly indicate he's a false teacher? Yes. Okay, all right. Now, we have other situations, other people here. Yes. Have established. I see no reason to continue, no legitimate reason to continue except to move on to the thing that started the whole thing. He is or he is not a false teacher. Would you agree that if he is a false teacher, you can't fellowship him? Yes, if he is proven to be a false teacher, then right. I cannot Then let's him. set on and see what we can determine here that's already been around for almost two and a half years. Well, the, the fact of the matter is we are doing our own investigation with regard to Dave Miller. 
And for the last we, two and a half years, you've been doing that. You have. You still yes, don't know. Yes, but it hasn't been all of the days of the last two years. It was not two and a half. We were. We were. When we came here, we heard a little bit about. We were. Our main concern was about Southwest because you had introduced a lot of stuff about Southwest mm -hmm. and we caught some of that Dave Miller situation, but that was not why we came those two years ago. It was because at that time you had begun to introduce the Southwest uh, church mm -hmm. uh, over several different okay. issues. But you've had two and a half years. We've had two and a half years, yes, but we have not for those two and a half years every single day sat down to consider every little point that we need to consider to analyze all the essential evidence to make a conclusion according to the scriptures. Now, the reason we have not done that is because we ourselves have had false statements made about us. And if it is the case that false statements have been made about us, what does that say about the other so-called evidence that has been put out? If false statements have been made about us, then how can we truly trust what has been said? So that puts us in a position to have to verify every detail and make certain that it's not a he said, uh, he said, uh, she said thing, but it, it comes directly from the source. I know for sure that this okay. person believes this, and I know where he violates the scripture, and I can say, indeed, this person is a false teacher. He's unwilling to repent, and therefore we should separate from him. Have you read, which flowed from his own mind, when he preached it, in words that set out his views, they were guided by his thought, his sermon that he preached. Have you, on this very subject of reevaluation, reflection of elders, have you read that? I've heard the sermon. Have you, you've heard it? Yes, you've sir. You've heard the sermon. I have an audio recording of it. Did you understand from that sermon what Dave Miller delivered it to accomplish? What he intended to accomplish in that sermon? Did you understand what he said? I did not. In certain areas. And I want to ask, how on the face of the earth can you research anything to determine right or wrong with well, anything? He preached the sermon to that church to convince them, because the elders asked him to, yes. that the reaffirmation and reevaluation of elders was ordained of God in the New Testament. Okay. Is that not right, brethren? Yes. Okay, now okay, this. You read it, but you didn't. What is it no, you didn't I heard, understand? About I heard it. it. Well, read it, heard it. Did Should you understand the okay. words? Whether you heard them or read them, did I you just, understand the words? I just said I did not. In, okay. in certain areas, he was ambiguous as to what he fully meant. I wouldn't when, tell him when, that. Huh? <laughs> I said I wouldn't tell him that because he well, didn't think he was. No, he was ambiguous and, you know, even certain brethren that stand with you made the same assessment. Here is an article in 2003 by Brother Dub Mowry and it's entitled, My Response. Okay, it's, Brother Mowry is here. If you're yes, for well, well let, let, me, let me read the quote and then, and then he can... Uh, answer for himself. And I know, Brother Mauricio, this is why I bring it up. I don't want to introduce anything that no one can answer for themselves here. Now, in this expose of the 2003 Continuing for the Faith, uh, you set forth... What was all the date on that? 2003. January 2003, Continuing for the Faith. Mm -hmm. uh, his article is entitled, My Response. In this, he states that he has a personal conversation with the Brown Trail uh, congregation, he states Dave Miller and Maxie Bourne, I think it is, yes, uh, July 17, 2002, he went on a Wednesday morning to meet with these brethren, and you can read this for yourself, he can come up here and comment for himself, but notice what he states in the third to the last paragraph, I'll read distinctly, concerning the various rumors and accusations made against Dave Miller and the Brown Trail congregation, I was not able to determine what was true, what was exaggerated, and what was false. With Dave's permission, I posted his own explanation of these matters on the previously mentioned internet list. This included his defense of the reaffirmation slash reevaluation of elders. Now, from Brother Mary's own words, he said in 2003 that it was difficult for him to be able to sift through all of the evidence and come to a conclusion. Now, obviously, and in his own mind, he's come to a conclusion. But that does not negate the statement that he made that it was difficult for him to sift through all of this and see what was exaggerated, what was true, and what was rumored. Okay, let me ask you a Now, let me, let, let me make this final point. If that was true about him in 2003, that is doubly true about us, where now there is more rumor, 
and exaggeration and different things. It's well, difficult let me now ask to you a question sit through it. What did the Brown Trail elders and the Brown Trail Church understand Brother Dave Miller was teaching when he got up there for the very purpose and he has, you know, considerable education in how to speak? What did they understand him to be approving and saying was authorized by the Bible? And since by their fruits we shall know them, what fruit did they bear to show that they understood exactly what Dave Miller was teaching in that sermon? Well, I can say. What, you I can't say, what did they do? Well, what they did was they went along with it, but I cannot what say. What did they go along with? They went along with what you that call they the didn't reason. understand? No. They understood it then? They might have done something that they did not understand. They might be guilty of doing something they did not understand, yes. But the fact of the matter is, I cannot say what they understood if I have not spoken to them. Is it true, by their fruit you shall know? Yes. Did they bear fruit? Yes. Did they bear fruit from what they believed they put it into action? I don't know if they believe that. They can bear fruit and still not believe something. They can do something that so they, they practiced reevaluation, reaffirmation of elders, but they've never been educated. They didn't understand anything without, about it. They didn't know what they were doing, but they did it. That's possible. That's possible. Yeah, they did it two times. Yes, that's right. Yes. And they had that, ten years between it. Well, that's still possible. That's still possible. Well, it's possible the Baptist Church of Texas that's going to pull right up there and train its guns on it, but it's well, not very probable. Well, <laughs> that's a false analogy. Anyway, no, it's the not. Point, yes, it is. The point is, and I want to play this for everybody's hearing. What is it? It's uh, the Continuing for the Faith open form of last year. Okay. Uh, this is your response. Here, you're talking about here. Yes, sir. This is your response to a letter by Barry Gilrath Sr. with regard to his pressing this open forum. Uh, what is, what is, is it dealing with this subject? Yes, sir. Okay. It's dealing with Dave Miller. I want everybody to listen to this. That needs to be kept in mind. We haven't had trouble of standing up and declaring where we stood, listen, when we'd had time to fully get the evidence in, study it out, and know what was going on. These brethren are wanting us to walk on their own time schedule. They want us to come to them and say, well, is it time to back off now? That's what they're doing. That's the reason they lay all these, these years out here. All right, now, question. How much time do you need? Well, how much time did you need? Well, I knew back in 1990 that it was wrong. Okay, but you didn't withdraw fellowship until 96. Oh, no, I quit dealing with Dave from that standpoint, from, from inviting him on anything. It was on, on this tape, you fellowship Dave Miller on a lectureship with Michael Hatcher, in 2006, after which, in hindsight, you said, we'll never because, do that again. That's right, because we were trying to get him to see some things. Okay, but just a while ago, two seconds ago, you said, oh, no, since 1990, I never invited him. But you fellowshiped him no, in 96. No, I never have invited him since 1990. Okay, but you fellowshiped him in 96. We were in, well, I'm not, now, did, are we in fellowship right now? Uh, are we? Are we? That's up to you. Well, no, it has yes, to be. Sir. The fellowship's two ways three. Are we in fellowship right now? Well, it may be that we're out of fellowship attempting to resolve a problem, and according to Lynn Parker, he's already marked us, and I, I, I can know that between he and I, we're, we're this fellowship, but yesterday you extended your right hand to me and we shook hands. Now, are we in fellowship? I don't know. Well, after being called diatrophies and a few things, I'm kind of wondering how you feel about it. Well, do you, you know? Do you understand what diatrophies means? No, you don't have to tell me. I've never okay. heard that name. Uh, well, the the point is this. The point is this. You said just right now that you that you that you well, marked him as a false teacher in 1990. And then when I said that you had fellowship with him on a lectureship in 1996, you said, well, I was trying to give him time. Your own words here yes, say, sir. your own words here say, brethren need time. I was, they need to investigate. They need to assimilate all the information, then come to a conclusion. These brethren are wanting, to walk, wanting us to walk on their own time schedule. That's exactly yeah. what you want me to do. You want me to walk on your own time schedule and say, Dave Miller is a false teacher because we have investigated. Okay, I tell you what. Is it going to take another two and a half years? Possibly. Uh, five years? Maybe. So you may die then in fellowship with a person who is a false teacher. That's not my mindset, though. That's your mindset. I don't know that he's a false teacher I'm yet. Saying, I'm just saying. I don't know that he's a false teacher yet. How long? And matters. Been? And matters. In my mind, if I don't know he's a false teacher yet, and brother, I'm investigating, let, if I die, God will judge me. Brother, brother, listen, just a moment. I have known a number of people at times to be in error and try to work with them and give them a chance. But I was not in a situation to where I was in supporting of them and advocating them to this, that, and the other and saying that they were what they, a, a very godly person from the standpoint of that. Mm -hmm. I, did, I wasn't thrust into a situation to where I was budding with them. 
And it is true, Michael Hatcher and I discussed whether we should even be a part of that, and we resolved after we saw what was going to take place that night, it wouldn't happen again in the way it did there. Now, we discussed it. Now, why would we ever bring it to our minds to discuss it that night if we hadn't already concluded this man was all he ought to be relative to what the people at Brown Trail understood him to teach what he taught it for the purpose of their understanding? Okay. Now, you can read in 1990 what he preached to them to convince them, and you can't understand what the people he preached to understood. And you don't know how much longer it's going to take you to understand his sermon. Well, watch this. Watch this. Just a while ago, you said in 1990, you already understood he was a false teacher. On that point. On that point. But you had not disfellowshipped him because the 1996 lectureship proves that you had not disfellowshipped him because you, you spoke on that same lectureship I with spoke, him. Michael and I spoke on that lectureship yes. in Blasky, Tennessee. With him. He was with on there. He yes. was on there. So you were in fellowship with him. We were in fellowship with him. Then. Okay. You see that? That's a contradiction. Mm -hmm. In 1990, he said he already marked him in his mind. In 96, he said he spoke with him. He was in fellowship. So Brother Brown has just said, I was out of fellowship. I was in fellowship. No, I was out of fellowship. I was out of fellowship. I was in fellowship. That's exactly what you said just right now. That's exactly what he said. That's exactly will, what he said. Will you be quiet? Yes, I don't want, listen, if we're going to get back into what we got into yesterday, I'm shutting the whole thing down right now, and y'all are going to spend the next 40 years trying to figure out right from wrong. Okay. I'll be, you quiet, to do that. I'll be quiet. I tried to explain to you, and I don't know any other way to do it. When you're working with the church you're working with right now, there are people in that church, I dare say, who you don't think are living like they ought to live. Am I right? I don't know their personal lives. <coughs> I don't know their personal lives. Dodge. No, dodge, no, no, dodge. no. That's not a dodge. Listen to me. You right, so then, no, no, no. Listen okay, to me. okay, go ahead. I cannot answer the... the Everybody that you elder in your church is everything they ought to be. Is that right? And that's the same with you. You're not bearing with anybody who need to develop and who need to get rid of sin in their lives. You're that not long suffering with them. That was not the question. The question was, do I know everything that's going on in, in, my, in the congregation? I did not work? ask that question. You said, what did I you did say? Not, Re repeat what you said the first time. I asked where you preach. Yes. And we can play it back if we need to, because okay. I may not get it okay. just right. Okay. I think we can play it back. Hope we can. Okay. Uh, what I'm asking is, yes. where you preach as a gospel preacher, yes. knowing the New Testament charge on you as a preacher, yes. relative to what you preach and how you live and your fellowship, that the people in that congregation, every one of them, are in a position to where they don't need to change anything at all in order to go to heaven. No, they need help with the teaching of the, of the gospel, but I don't know every situation. I don't know... Is there anything any of the Hold members on. where you preach need to change in their life? Need to repent? Listen to me. Everybody needs the gospel. What I'm saying is I don't know. I got from your question whether I know that the, Brother A over here smokes and Brother B over here drinks and Brother C over here is having fornication. Well, I don't I'm care preaching. about what sin it is. Okay, I'm preaching to them to help them. Yes, they need help, but... but do, they, do you know of any of them that haven't repented that need to repent? Right now, no, I do not. You don't? No, sir. So no, every one of them there, I don't know who all you preach to, are not in need of changing anything in their life. No, I don't. At do you work with anybody that needs to change anything in their life? Yes, there, there, there are some people in the congregation I work with that are not members. They're visiting. And so when the opportunity arises, I preach. But there are no members you know of that, would, that need to correct their lives that you work with? Well, I have just said that I don't know specifically what they're going through, but... Yes, I do assume that everybody needs help in some area, but I don't know the specific areas. Now, where but is this going to? Well, where is the, the fact to? that you do tend to, to send out uh, long suffering to people who you know need some help in areas, though you don't know the specific areas? I don't disagree with that. That's right. Well, then why are you get upset with me? Because just a while ago, you said in 1990 you already marked him. I marked him as a false teacher on that point. Okay, so with that, that's to, with that's the, to with, listen to me. Listen to me. That's to imply that you withdrew fellowship because if you marked him, you I withdrew marked fellowship. I him with the intent on that point to be able to hopefully get him to change. I wasn't the only one that did it. Okay, there were more on. that were more involved in showing him the of his way than I was, and more specifically. Okay, in but, fact, but the information we got, which is requoted by Brother Doug McLeishan material he did in. Uh, the Bellevue Lectures, yes, sir. came originally from Goldwyn Music, who was one that really exposed the whole lot of the matter. Yes, sir. Now, the point is, I wasn't the only one, but that doesn't mean that I can't work with them just like I worked with you to try to get you to see certain things. Yes, sir, but what I'm trying to show you... Are, we, are we on this same lectureship together right now? Yes. Are we in agreement with one another? Not in this point. All right, then I answer you. 
Not at this point, but let me say that something. answers it. Yes, sir, but let me say something. No, 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 no. That so, answers it. So that I, answers it. But I cannot. You said yes, sir. That answers it. You be quiet. Yes, yes. You, you need to be quiet. You need to be quiet. Am okay, I, listen. We're running out of time. Yes, sir. Am I done here? Yes, you, you are right now. Okay. okay. Brother, uh, what is your name, Miss Mallory? I certainly want to make a correction concerning what was stated. Let me let me go back to uh, when I was preaching drum ride in 2002. Brother Miller spoke at I believe it was Cherokee Hill in Oklahoma City. I heard him there at Glenpool, suburbs of uh, Tulsa. And uh, what he taught there was sound. I bought his Pilot to the Straight book. Overall, I believe it's a very sound book. I was on a uh, internet list, primarily Church of Christ preachers, uh, named Lur List, short for Let Us Reason. There was one brother that made accusations against uh, Brother Dave Miller, several things that he had heard about him, and I could not believe some of the things that were said about him. And uh, some of it was that he promoted instrumental music. To this day, I don't believe that he did. That will be in the context of what you were talking about a while ago, not on uh, uh, reevaluation, reaffirmation of elders. That is a different thing. I looked on the inner net and found the phone number and uh, called Brown Trail Church and after a second call I believe I got to talk to Brother Miller and uh, when I went down I made arrangements he was not in the office at the time that I, maybe I got there a little early in the summer of 2002, Brother Mac Maxie Boren uh, escorted me into his office and we talked for about 30 minutes and then Dave came in. Dave was in the process of moving uh, to Alabama, wherever he was moving to, to work with the uh, uh, apologetic press. But uh, I studied with him for three and a half hours, asked him a lot of pointed questions. They were using for the second time the reaffirmation, reevaluation, re reaffirmation of elders. And uh, I pleaded with them to use their influence to stop it. Both men upheld it. They used an abstract percentage of 75%, and I can't to this day find in my Bible where you have to have a popularity vote of elders, and they have to have 75% approval. I do find, what is it, First Timothy 5, 19, 20, along there, if there are accusation against an elder, there are to be two or three witnesses. That's different. And uh, so I communicated by email before I went down. And when I came back, that is when I went back to Drumright where I was preaching at that time, I asked Brother Miller if I could share our correspondence with the list I was on. 
He said he could, that we could, but be discreet. So I presented him on the list exactly as he presented. I just sent the copy of it to him, uh, to the list rather. Other brethren, Brother Brown, Brother McClish, are among those that receive copies of these emails. Brother Ken Chumley, he, he was on the list and he could verify of receiving that on that list. I called one of the elders that had visited the congregation where I was preaching at before moving to Oklahoma here in Texas that had visited there several times. I pleaded with him to stop that if they would. And uh, it's not scriptural. And uh, when I made those replies back then, any, the qualification concerning what you read was limited to certain things that I could not, we didn't primarily discuss. We discussed the uh, re reevaluation, reaffirmation of elders. We did not even discuss the marriage thing, but it was just that. And so there was, that is to qualify what you read. That was in reference to the other things, not not the primary thing I, I was concerned about. And uh, so I'm saying that other brethren have had access to those emails. And uh, uh, later, Maxie Boren had an open letter. He named Brother Brown, myself, Marvin Weir, and one or two other fellows in there. And uh, he claimed that he was not upholding that, but they had to do something. Well, evidently, they wanted to remove some elders, and that's the way they chose to do it. And uh, if Brother Dave Miller is viewing this today, Dave, you're bringing division in the body of Christ, even causing disturbance here of difference between brethren on you. And you're going to have to answer. Much division has been brought in the church of our Lord because of you. You're too proud, evidently, to repent. And you know, and I know, and the Lord knows, that you upheld that, along with Maxie Bowen. Thank you. Just a moment. I want to make this one comment. We've got two men here who in the last year or so, and I don't know exactly when, made personal calls to Dave Miller. Am I right, brethren? Two men. We've had this man here. I believe that's two or three. And they have said plainly, these two men, Wayne Blake and Jeff Litke, that he said he had nothing to repent of regarding what he preached up there and that he said what he meant and he meant what he said. Now, there's three. Either they're, they are ranked liars or they fulfill the teaching of the Bible regarding establishing a fact. Now, Lynn needs to make one comment. Well, I need to respond well, to what you Well, you can respond to it in just a second. This goes back to what you said about him. You can come right back to this in just a second. Well, I didn't, I didn't finish about him. Well, you, right, Primarily. Now, right now you have. Well, okay. if the Lord wills, you'll have two you know, other, other time. And if they, uh, I won't be able to be here tomorrow, I'll be back teaching and uh, such. And you all had all day yesterday, and I'm going to take, I, I said 60 seconds. Here it goes. First of all, while we may agree on certain things as far as verification of, of uh, evidence, and absolutely I believe that, we don't agree. I want to make sure you understand. We do not agree 
that what was said was false. As a matter of fact, the evidence all points to the fact that this was a perfectly proper representation that Frank Carragher made not yet. Now, if you want to talk about evidence, okay, here's the Shenandoah lectureship. You were there. I know. I went there. I watched you. I watched your brother. Watched you both speak there. I verified that. Here, here we are. Here we are. Now, does that show a position by somebody as far as fellowship? If they're going to go over there, does this not serve as evidence? I would present my first two witnesses as Joshua and Israel Rodriguez. That would be my first two witnesses right there. But anyway, regardless of that, here what you've got is a situation where apparently Frank represented it properly. But if Frank misrepresented it, I'm not sure that we're all going to throw Frank under the, under the wagon and stomp on Frank. Maybe, based on what we've been hearing now, maybe y'all are the source of confusion. Maybe y'all hadn't got your stories together. Maybe y'all need to decide. Y'all can't decide if, if uh, Dave Miller needs to repent or if he never taught anything that he need to, needed to repent of. So maybe it's not Frank's misunderstanding. Maybe it's the fact that y'all were telling him information, and in fact, you came back, and the fruit of it, and I don't have ESP, I do have ESPN, but I don't have ESP, and I could not know what transpired in that meeting, but it was telling, and the next witness I would simply say is, next witness is, once again, Joshua Rodriguez. Did you discuss Dave Miller when you went up there to see Joe Smetter and Joshua Rodriguez right here yesterday said yes? That was neat. You're confused on that. I'm sorry, Israel. That's right. Oh, by the way, talk about confusion. You wanted him to apologize. You usually got up here yesterday and you said at Lynn Parker, and you read my statement of uh, January 21st, and you said he spoke this with his own lips. I did not. I wrote it with my own keyboard. <laughs> okay? Now, if we're going to be picky, we have to really get down to the bare fact. That's right. right. Now, I, and I now before it. you say anything, Israel, I want you to realize what you've done to yourself. Okay. And that's what, and all of you have. All right. You have admitted that you couldn't understand everything in a sermon presented by a very capable preacher that he had researched the design of which was to persuade the congregation that what they were going to do was right. The congregation evidently understood that this is what they would do, at least many of them did, because they did the very thing he taught. Yet you can be very precise and specific on how confused these other folks are, and you've admitted all this time. You've heard it. You don't know what the world is talking about for sure. Now what does that tell me about listening to you? That tells me that you're not, you don't understand what I'm saying. I understood you. Okay. I understood you said right. you heard the words and didn't know what am to I, say. It. Am I going to be given an opportunity to speak? You're going to, you're, you're going to be given, a, 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 I'll tell you what, somebody time me. He's going to be given two minutes. And then we're going to these other folks. You had yesterday, you already had. I want these other folks to be able to respond. You okay. made charges against them and called them by their name. Okay. Let me say this. Two minutes right now. Let me say Don't this. speak. Brother Lynn Parker came up here. He had five minutes. Brother, brother, more, more. You better use your time wisely. Uh, Excuse me, sir. I'm trying to talk here. Brother Mallory took about five minutes just now. Now I'm limited to two minutes. Well, you're less than and that I, now. Hold on, hold it's on. less than that now. Would you quit interrupting me? No, I won't. Now, don't start that stuff again or we'll shut her down now and you won't get what you got. There is obviously a double standard here because when Brother Parker spoke, no interruptions. When Brother Mallory spoke, <coughs> no interruptions. When Israel Rodriguez speaks, interjection, interjection, clarify. Excuse me, uh, would you please hold, hold her back there? Would you please reprimand that person? I, I have just done it. Okay, you take, thank you. you. Look. Thank you. I'm okay. Let's go on. The point, the point of the matter Israel, is, no, I'm stopping it right now. Just go sit down. You're not going to have anything okay. else to say. You're going to sit down because you're a smart aleck. Now okay. go sit down. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So that's the truth. Yes. Now that ends it as far as you're concerned. And that ends it as far as him being your representative. You're afraid of the evidence. That's what it ends it. Well, you wouldn't understand it. In the next 10 years, we gave it to you. Well, you can understand it. Go ahead. Years. Yeah, right up here. Dennis Francis from Suffolk, Virginia. I'm known as Skip. Uh, I'm a gospel preacher and an elder at the Suffolk Church. Yesterday, when I walked in here, as you see here, there was a line of men sitting on the front pew, and they were up here primarily because they knew that they were going to be responding to the Rodriguez's. Now, when I walked in, I walked in and I went down the aisle and sat in my seat, primarily because I was not involved in this discussion. Now, you might recognize how surprised I was when my name got called in this very discussion. Now, last night, because, you know, I'll say this, I don't have dementia, I don't have Alzheimer's, 
but I recognize that memory sometimes fails. So I gave up a little bit of my much needed rest at the house last night and went on a Yahoo list. Looked my name up on both of the lists that were mentioned and could not find one post that I said anything to do with the Rodriguez's. Not one post. Dennis Francis. Whatever we do, we're going to have to do it in about eight, about 12 minutes. We go the same length of time we did yesterday. Because this has to do with tapes and time and all this stuff. Michael, go ahead and speak if you don't mind. You can do a little bit more research because yesterday when you were asked if you had a copy of the CD that I had put together, you stated, quote, the one that has incomplete letters, end quote. Find and produce incomplete letters on the CD, or else you need to repent for making the statement. And I've got, this, I've got a copy of all that is on the CD, so please produce the original letter that is incomplete. So the call is to refuse the individual from him the letter that's incomplete. The charge was made yesterday that it was incomplete. Go ahead, sir. You want to state your name, please? Brother Joshua Rodriguez from the Adam Street Church of Christ. With regard to the things that my brother was speaking in Israel, uh, as far as concerns Brother Dave Miller, there is a lot of confusion on Dave Miller. There is some ambiguity in the sermon. And one of the reasons why we say there's ambiguity because in his sermon there are some statements that he makes that were unclear, but yet in 2005 he writes a letter to the Brotherhood. And in this letter, in some degree, it almost clears up the ambiguity, but yet we still feel that there is need for more investigation. And in this letter he says, with regard to the elder reevaluation, reaffirmation, I do not believe that elders should be temporarily appointed and their terms only continued on the basis of an arbitrary vote of the membership. I do not believe that a congregation has the right to use any procedure that expels qualified men from the eldership. Now some of these things that we're bringing in and we're taking in in our investigation is causing us to say, what's going on? This is one of the main reasons why we have not yet made that final decision. And with regard to the evidence that's coming on your side from the Continuing for the Faith, it's very difficult seeing that there are many inaccuracies that are being spoken. But let me get back now to Brother Lynn Parker. Brother Lynn Parker, regardless of what Brother Carragher had repented of, that still does not negate the fact that you made a false statement. And you still need to apologize and publicly repent. And the reason why all these other men were brought into the, to the matter is because based upon your statement, Brother Denham made also false statements that we covered up Brother Metter's sin. And then from y'all's statement, a host of other brethren began to write. Now, some of the materials that we got from the website, I believe it's Don DeLong, he said, who is this mo, the spineless mo that y'all are getting this information from? I don't know if you, if you agree or understand that we're getting it from Frank Carragher. Furthermore, you marked us. You said you marked us. And you continue in FTS. Frank Carragher, you have fellowship with him. Frank Carragher uh, fellowships one of the members that where I preach, Bert Mori. Bert Mori is a member where I preach. So you're in error. You still need to repent. Well, let me ask you something, Brother Joshua. Do you believe that... Uh, he needs to repent. Well... But I want to ask you what you believe. This is what it all comes down to. Dave Miller either taught error or he didn't. Now, you're trying to figure out what he did, and, and you know, this is, this is where you We're are. We're trying to figure let it me out. Ask you, let me ask you this about your own personal convictions. Do you believe in a reevaluation, reaffirmation of elders? No, sir, I don't. You don't? Okay. I believe, according to the Bible, if an elder is going to be uh, talked to to, st to step down, he has to clearly violate Scripture. 
he has to clearly violate scripture. Well, there's one thing that for sure happened. Brown Trail understood something, and Dave Miller was asked by the elders to express himself. And we've got men right here who have dealt directly with him on three separate occasions over a period of years, and they've indicated that he had no problem with what he spoke and what they did. So it's rather obvious in view of that standard that whatever he wrote later under pressure and duress to make some sort of comment must not have counteracted what he said he would not repent of, which is what he preached and what they did. In 1989, 1990, I was still not even a teenager yet. Well, let me tell you what... And let, me, let, let, me, let me tell you why I'm telling you this. I began preaching when I was around 16, 17 years old, 1996, 1997. These issues I had no idea about. I'm coming up preaching the gospel, trying to establish my work. Then Brother Carragher, about two years ago, makes reference to some of these things. We hear about the Southwest uh, being marked, so we come to these things. We're investigating the issues. We haven't been preaching for 30 years, and as if we blindly cover these things. But the fact still remains, this man, then Parker, needs to repent. Whether it be, if he made that false statement, he doesn't deny it, okay, well, you still did wrong. And you fellowship Frank Carragher, who fellowships... Bert Morey, who fellowships me, you still need to repent. And that public repentance needs to be today. Okay, real, real quick, let he found what he wants. Come on, let's. If Francis's, uh, Dennis Francis's statement that he made about us, it's, excuse me, I'm sorry. It's in the context of, of all of this that was being written about us. It doesn't mention us directly by name, but it says here, uh, all of these so-called balanced brethren, etc. And then he, he mentions certain people and it says, etc. He mentions people who believe the Matthew 18, 15 through 17 principle. And he does this all under the title, Men of La Mancha. This is where he made reference to us. And this is what we take exception to. Well, this is the moment. I'll answer it. Yes, sir. And explain to me. This email was in reference to a number of other other issues that I was dealing with with other brethren who are named in the email. Justin, Andy, James, Robert, Roger, etc. are mentioned by name in the email. It had no bearing whatsoever on the Rodriguez brothers. They are they are they are Okay. I guess it covers everybody. You know, this is this is very much excuse me, it's my time. This is very much like what we've been hearing about being Brown's boys, ignorant brethren that are just ditto heads and and drinking Lynn Parker's Kool Aid. Not everybody that's on the list is necessarily dealing with every issue. Just because we're on the list and dealing with scriptural arguments against issues doesn't automatically lump us all together simply because you see an etc. in an email. My name is Eddie Rodriguez, and I'm one of the elders for the Norton Street Church of Christ and also one of their gospel preachers. As an elder, I understand the scripture that in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, it gives us the authority to be overseers of our own congregation and anything that happens within that congregation. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verses 1 through 4 also make the same statement. Now, if we go back to the Old Testament in the book of Ezekiel, as uh, they talk about the watchmen and in chapter 13 and chapter 34 it mentions that whenever we come across someone that is in sin and if we do not rebuke that person that's in sin then their blood will be upon us as elders in this congregation the elders of this congregation that have the authority have already been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that Lynn Parker has made false accusations against us and therefore, it rests on the elders of this congregation to be able to fulfill Titus chapter 1, where it says that the mouth of King bears. Thank you. Go ahead. Daniel Cole, Trail Creek Church of Christ of Soto, Kansas. My name was also mentioned yesterday by Brother Rodriguez in being a participant in the discussion. 
Uh, I just want to make a couple of observations. I won't retract what I posted. Uh, I will refer to a couple of things here in your, the letter from this supposed letter from Joe Metter. It's not a letter from Joe Metter because it's inclusive of the signatures of the Rodriguez family in addition to Joe Metter. It's your letter with his. Another observation that needs to be made is Joe has admitted in this that he has studied philosophy, Oriental philosophy, for since 1968. That's 40 years of involvement in philosophy. From my understanding, he should be better spending in time spending his, studying his Bible rather than Oriental philosophy. He also makes the observation down here he studied Gestalt, Gestalt therapy since 1977. That's 30 years and nothing more than paganism and he should be better involved in Bible study. Now I've got a question for you. How is it that you men were able to, within one meeting of Joe Metter, conclude that he was not a false teacher, but it's taken you over two and a half years to work with Dave Miller to figure that out? Amen. 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 First of all, we were students under Brother Joseph Metter. I have never met Dave Miller in my life. Thus, we had a relationship with Brother Metter while we were students. And his work that preceded him, we gave him the benefit of the doubt regarding his history. Now, that's just the answer to the question. With regard to Joseph Metter, he wrote this letter in our hearing. He answered the questions. There was nothing in the meeting that was amiss, that was chargeable or a violation of uh, sin. Thus, we made that conclusion. This man wrote with, uh, with his own handwriting, and you don't even know the meeting, and you say it was a letter by us. He handwrote the letter first. He handwrote the letter first. Then he handed it to his secretary to type out. Then I asked him if he would please put his signature on the paper, lest anyone would think that we were lying about this letter. He put his signature on the paper. It was his letter. We had no involvement in this letter. There again, you're trying to, as Daniel Dinham said, boring on the knowledge of omniscience, as if you know the whole meeting. No, sir. This is not the case. Amen. Now, the reason why I come back to this issue or come back to this podium is because, what do y'all say about this that Dave Miller wrote in 2005? He didn't, and, 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 he didn't repent of anything. We said, well, I realize, I realize that, that there is no repentance here, but as far as clarification, he does say, I do not believe that a congregation has the right to use any procedure that expels qualified men from the eldership. He does say that. Well, I know that. Do you have any issue with the, with the letter other than he didn't repent? I have an issue with the fact he wrote one thing there and did something else earlier. That's the point. That's it, the point. There's some confusion. He's never repented of what he did earlier, and he tells people he sees no need to do it, but he issues this letter. Now, that so there's can, nothing wrong with this letter? I don't see if it's supposed to be a letter of repentance. It is no, no, no. Okay, but I'm saying, is there anything wrong in this letter? I don't know what, as far as knowing wrong, I don't, any know, what false, man, any I don't false know what the man means because he contradicts himself in this letter in view of what he wrote and what they practiced up there that they understood him to teach. That's and he exactly. Says that, and he says then he doesn't repent of it. Notice but what he said. Notice what he said. Notice what he said. Well, we know what he, he contradicts. We he contradicts. Before you did. And thus you say it's a contradiction. That's the same argument we're making to you. No, no. He contradicted himself. No, no, that's not it at all. Yes. By let's, his let's, fruits, let's, we got some comments By his here. fruits, uh, by his fruits. fruits. He, he wants to address what you're talking about. Right one there. more thing, one more thing. Lynn Parker still has not repented. Well, amen. Brother Carragher, Brother Carragher, do you have fellowship with Bert Morning every morning drinking coffee uh, with him? We can't get this. We can't get this recorded like this. He does Joshua, have it. Joshua. He still needs a report. Joshua. I'm sitting down. Oh. Only thing I want to say is, uh, I mean, Danny Douglas. Uh, I want to make a comment about the Dave Miller letter that Brother Rodriguez read. 
in the sermon of Brother Miller, he says this, just to show that what he said in that letter is not true. This is his sermon. I'm quoting it. Shepherds cannot lead where sheep will not follow. So a man could be technically qualified to be an elder, and yet if the membership where he attends does not perceive him a leader in whom they respect and trust, he cannot shepherd effectively. And then on down. What follows then that one of the qualifications of a shepherd is that the membership perceives him to be such and is willing to submit and to follow to respect and to trust. And that's not in the Bible. Human perception. Now, here is the biblical rationale for evaluation of elders. Here's a portion of it that the elders handed out to the congregation in connection with Dave Miller's sermon. This also proves that what he said is not true in his statement of 05. Shepherds cannot lead where sheep will not follow. Even if a man is technically qualified to be an elder, if the membership where he attends does not perceive him as a leader whom they respect and trust, he cannot shepherd effectively. So does that show harmony? I've read you the sermon. Yeah, this was in 1990. Well, the, the Brown Trail congregation followed what he said, and nobody's repented of that, and he does not repent in that letter. He contradicts himself, and that tells me he's a double-minded man who's unstable in all his ways. I, well, what does that have anything to do with it? <laughs> Go ahead. Daniel Dunham, Newport News, Virginia. Uh, addressing that particular point, then I want to get to this one. Dave Miller, his sermon was to be the outline for the procedure. Whatever the procedure is, it tells us what the sermon meant. And whatever the sermon meant, that's what the procedure carried out. That's the short, the short of it. Now, you can see what the sermon meant by what was done because that's what the elders told him to do. That was it. Not about it. That was it. 100% it. And you brethren who are trying to separate the idea of the procedure from the sermon are, you're out in left field. Sit down, please. Uh, okay, uh, that's uh, fine. Uh, Joshua, first of all, if we go any longer, it's going to be up to these people who want to stay here and go longer, and there's going to have to be some changing of tape. <clears throat> Am I right? Well, I, I know, but these brethren here may not be for it. And now the elders, okay, you want it? Okay. Let's let, do what? Yeah. Okay, just these two right here, him and Lynn. That'll be it, Joshua. You're not going to be right. Well, just wait a minute, Joshua. We've got to, somebody's got to run this, and you fellas aren't going to do it. Now, somebody's got to make somebody upset. And I'm the one that's been designated to make you upset. Right? So, well, we, I, that's, as um, far as I'm concerned, we've started this thing off. We can continue on, except... Uh, that's fine with me. I have no problem with that. Unless there's some... Yes. Well, there, there are a lot of names who were called, and they haven't had the opportunity to respond to the charge. That's what we're running into. And, and after all, their names were all listed. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, they have. This matter deals with all of our souls and the churches. Goodwill, I'm here to stay. Hmm. Okay. We can report and set her in the park on this. We can stay all night if we have to. Well, we're not going to stay all night. we got other things to do. Uh, More important than this? Let's, yes, sir. This is not the all in all of things in this lectureship. Well, you could bring it up for 20 years, and so it must be. Now, you going to start that again? No. Go ahead. Yesterday, the statement was made that this letter was written with Dave Miller's uh, or uh, Joseph Meadows' hand. Uh, the very first sentence indicts that. It says, after a personal meeting with Joseph Matter, he has given the following response to our questions, then quote. He came out in the third person? 
You're saying that he, that he wrote that after a personal meeting with Joseph Netter. Netter, he has given the well, following response to our questions. Well, we don't. Let's just. Uh, hey, all right, that's enough. That, that's enough, please. That is no. Look, I tell you what. That's I can silly. see just right now what's going to happen. It's going to be another situation. He said what he said. You said what you said. But you won't shut up. Now, you're saying that to both of us, right? I, I'm saying that to both of you. I'm saying to anybody. I'm just simply saying he said what he said. And when I ask you to be quiet, I wish you'd be quiet. I don't want to holler, shut up again. But he had the floor. Now, does that make any difference, folks, when somebody's got the floor? Now, we are, have not got time to go ahead and put this on. I don't know what we're going to do as far as these folks making responses. Do I have the floor? You can't help yourself. Papa, get a board and use it on his rear end. Maybe that'll happen now. <laughs> Brother, there's, there's, there's no ill will here. There's no ill will. There's no ill will. It's not a matter of ill will. It's okay, a matter of that man right there won't run the show. In his childhood? Well, I know that the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. Tim, Tim we're wasting time here. That's... Hey, want, know, hey, folks, have y'all noticed, if you let them run it, it's just fine. I don't think we'll run anything. I think we're through. Dismissed. <laughs> so you don't want to deal with the issue? I don't want to deal with you and the way you are.